recording. Okay, so this is just a fun little exercise on how do we make organic looking objects. And for this, this is going to be making something that looks kind of like this. It's using all the same technologies that we've been uh, looking at in our pre previous modeling tutorials. I actually like to look at other people's artwork, as I've mentioned before. So this one is a pumpkin that if we break it down and look at it in Sketchfab, although we can see triangles here, I can sort of see the quadded out pieces for this. And this is giving a good idea on how we can construct this. So I'm going to use this as an idea um, and just kind of come up with the idea that some of these are uh, of a certain width and other rows are a little bit smaller than that. And I'm going to use that as a reference for this, so that way when I uh, start to carve away, I am left with something like that for my final piece. So first thing I'm going to do is create, not that, this. It's a sphere. I'm going to drop this down to 10 by 10, so I have a little bit uh, less geometry to be able to work with. And from here, I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I am going to delete the top and bottoms of this. So if I go to my top, if I go to my face mode and just select these and hit delete, I now have holes here, which I know not a great thing for a pumpkin. However, it's great for me to be able to use a certain tool. What I want you to take away from this little quick exercise, which isn't really a graded exercise or anything, just something fun, is the idea of the order of the things you do when you model. So for this, I have this shape which I am now going to go into my mesh tools and the insert edge loop tool. Now remember, if I were to do that uh, before, if I had it like this and I go into either my act or my modeling multi-cut, I can only kind of get to here. So I can start to cut some stuff around. But you'll notice those caps are still here. So that kind of screws some stuff up later on. So what I end up doing is just deleting them. So I get them out of the way. Now, when I'm doing this with my either multi-cut or insert edge loop, I can get them to go all the way uh, down without that other piece. And you'll see in a second why I'm doing that. So I'm going to go randomly adding some cuts, just a knife cutting around, cut, 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 and cut. And I think I'm going to use this. Now, if I take this and double click, hold down shift, double click, I'm basically just selecting some of these. I'm going to add another multi-cut right here. Okay. And now, if I use the scale tool and pull that in, I have this shape. Now, if I hit bevel, and hit three, I have that shape. So it's kind of getting a little closer to what a pumpkin would look like. Now if I didn't do the bevel and I just had this uh, shape like this, it is it still is okay. Um, it's just we lose some, some of those grooves a little bit. So to get those grooves to show up a little bit more, this and then hit bevel and then now a little bit more helpful. Now I have some issues. One of those issues is the fact that this thing is a ball still. It's not plump like a pumpkin, so or not plump, but stout. If I squeeze that down, that's looking better, sort of. However, I need to get these and this. Now if I take this and push this down, and if I hold down control, double click here, and push this down, There's more of a pumpkin shape. On the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. Double click here, pull that down. And now I can probably mess around with the scale on this. There we go. So here's sort of a pumpkin. Now, I have holes in this. How do we get rid of those? Well, I can go into, I, I've selected the edge loops around there and went to mesh. Fill a hole, and now it filled some holes. From here, I'm going to take this one, hold down shift and scale, ooh, and then now shift and scale, 
And from here, I'm gonna go to my Edit Mesh Circularize. You guys have used that tool before. And I'm gonna scale that up. Scale it up. And I'm just messing around with this shape to kind of make it look fun there. So all I did was I filled the hole, I grabbed that top hole and made that happen. And now I have this shape. Now I have end gons all over the place. So uh, be aware that this is not the best thing yet. Uh, we would want to go to mesh, quadrangulate, and it should try to fix some of those for me. Some of them don't. That's okay, we'll leave that alone for our next step. Now that I have that, I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna go into my computer. And intro, and I'll just put this pump. All right, we'll throw that in there. Now that I have that, let's make some shapes to cut out for a jack-o'-lantern. So I'm gonna go here and Let's say you got this, scale it down. Let's say it's gonna be just uh, like a, a scary skeleton, or scary pumpkin. So I have, I want this to be a triangle. I'm gonna hit delete on this and you'll notice that I all of a sudden have this looking uh, shape. So if I select these and then hit delete, now I have what I need. Duplicate it, spin it around. And we can change that to be similar. I'm just quickly doing this. I'm sure everyone knows how to move around some triangles here. So now that I have that, let's duplicate that same shape again. We'll stick it right in the middle for a nose. And there we go. And then now the last but not least part is a mouth. So I'm gonna go maybe around here and this one and that one and scale scale okay let me scale it just on these two so that it maintains that thickness okay this doesn't look like a spooky skeleton yet or not a skeleton but a jack-o-lantern let's bevel these so I'm gonna hit bevel and it gave me even more uh, points I'm gonna actually tell it to give me two points or two segments instead of uh, just one and from here I'm gonna grab all of these and just push it down and then from here I'll grab those as well and push those up so you can see I'm actually modeling these part that I'm going to subtract from my uh, pumpkin. Now that I have these, I can place those into my uh, pumpkin. I can grab them. I'm going to combine them. So mesh combine. And I'll, I'll do the face separately. And just like in the real world, we pick a part on the pumpkin that actually might look good uh, with those pieces uh, subtracted from that. So I'm actually going to use this uh, other side maybe right here just rotating it sticking that down and in now that I'm about here I'm gonna go mesh separate and modify center pivot so that way I can scooch these around a little bit I hit G to make that command happen again. And why am I rotating this? Well, it's the same idea with the pumpkin is we're trying to get that shape to line up as much as possible. It's not a flat object, so we're kind of following the contours of that shape to make this uh, make sense here. So that's looking pretty good. That I'll move up and in. And then this one right here. So now that I have this, let's see what we can do. All right, 
This is going to give me a shape, but as you can see, it's not going all the way around. So what we could do is scale that so it's super thick. And it should allow for me to cut out those pieces now because this went all the way through it. So as you see, if we go in here, it goes all the way back this way. So just a thick shape. Now, what I'm about to do violates all the rules for when we make stuff in 3D. Uh, this is going to be um, for saving. And then now selecting my pumpkin and an object and using, nope, not yet. We're gonna actually, let's smooth this up. So I'm gonna go mesh, smooth. So I've got this smoothed out. I'm gonna do it one more time, mesh, smooth. It gave me more resolution. I can't go back from here, it's stuck this way. So um, it's not like mesh smooth preview. It's, this is smooth and I, it's not previewed at all. But this is helpful because now I have more geometry to be able to work with. I can have that selected and this selected and then now do mesh booleans difference. And notice how that cut that piece out. Notice what it made though. All these little demons, like look at this end gone. He shouldn't exist. There's one, two, three, four, five sides to that. That's not, that's not good. So we'll have to clean that up later on, but this is a way that we can build stuff. This is not how you do it for games or anything. This is just a fun way to cut pieces out of other shapes. It's also a good way for Maya to crash after a while because it hates this. But I'm just subtracting these out. So I have those objects selected. Mesh Boolean's difference. Now I have N-Gons all over the place. Um, not a good thing. First thing I'm going to do is select all of the um, faces that I used that are causing it to have kind of this um, negative side in it. And I'm getting rid of them. So delete, 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 delete. I'm going to go from here over to here and double click. It went all the way across, hit delete. And then from here, double click. Oh, it doesn't want to do it that way. I'll just keep clicking away till the carpal tunnel makes me stop. Let me see. Okay, we're almost. No, we're not. We're almost there. Okay, I've selected these, deleted them. All right, I have this shell. Now, I still have n -gons, so we're going to go to mesh, quadrangulate. Still didn't want to work, so mesh, triangulate. And now the end gons are gone. It's just got a lot of triangles here, which is fine. Uh, from here, I'm going to take this whole object and I'm going to just hit extrude. Now, if I pull straight out, what I ended up doing was extruding and I made a shape. But the problem is sometimes when that happens, it doubles up some polygons here. So I'm going to try extruding in the opposite direction. I'm going to go with this, extrude. And you'll notice it's black first. If I push in, that's maintaining itself. But you'll notice all of a sudden, what the heck? That doesn't look right. Well, that's because our normals are flipped. So I'm going to go into my mesh display, reverse. And I got a pumpkin. So you can either do it by pulling it out or pulling it in. It seems like it's going to give the same effect to it. And there's a little spooky, scary uh, pumpkin that we created. Now. If you wanted to go beyond that, we could always you know, cut that top part off and all that too. But this is just a quick way that we could make something like this that should be 3D printable. Um, if you submit that to me, I will print one of these things out. Um, and definitely, oh, I made some mistakes back there. But uh, fun little exercise on how to make some organic stuff. Remember, if this is what you want as a career path, this is something that isn't just gonna be something you'll be doing inside of class. Uh, investing the time for class projects gets you class work done. Investing that time out of cl uh, class to do random little exercises and projects for yourself builds your portfolio and it, it builds you up higher than uh, just uh, your regular portfolio. Think about it the same way as a professional basketball player or a soccer player. Um, yeah, you're going to be going to practice with your team, right? So this is kind of practice, our class. Then after that, you're still expected to hit the gym. You're still expected to go running, all those different things to build up your, um, your skills on your own time. That's really the only way to make it as a pro. That's the same thing with us. So this is a fun little one I think that a lot of people wanted to do um, that I think is 
is worth it.